what a wonderful time of worship. Amen. Well, friends, it is good once again to be in the house of the Lord and to see all of you and some some faces that haven't seen them in some time. So good to see everyone. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday morning, a little cooler than last week, amen? Yeah. Well, friends, at this time, um, this is a time in our service when we lift our the concerns of our hearts to the Lord and also how we, we share how the Lord has blessed us through this week and those things great and small, how, how the Lord has just continued to work in our lives and bless us through each and every day. Uh, so if we have any praise reports that we would love to share. Yes, Wendy. They know who we are when they get in our car. 
Amen. And I just want to praise God that He gave us that. And I said to Richard, I said this morning, I said, you know, those toys are still, you know, they still curse when we weren't around. And, you know, I said, He gave us that little seed that we just planted in the crop. And He said, God gave it to me. And I was just so blessed all morning to think about the fact that I got to tell those two boys about Jesus Christ and have a relationship with Christ. And I just know that through little Richard that they are going to just see the love of God in everything. So I'm okay. That's awesome. Praise God. In, in a lot of people's lives, we may be the only Christ that they get to see. So it's so important in the example that we that we give the, in what we show people and how we live and how we express ourselves and how we show our heart. You, know, you don't know what impact that makes until a car ride from the mall. So that's awesome. Anyone else have anything they'd like to share how the Lord's blessed them this week? Okay. Any prayer requests this morning? Any? Yes? Um, um, Absolutely. Carol's brother, Dwight Cook, who's not feeling well and he'll be having a doctor's appointment coming up. Is that right? We'll be praying for Dwight. Any others? Yes. The Dylan family, family will be remembering them in prayer. Any others? Yes, in the back. Okay. what the family of God does. We, we come together in times when, when we don't have the strength ourselves. And you know, the Lord carries us through so many different stages of, of, of this thing that we call life. So many times in my own life where I just didn't have, where I didn't think that I could make that next step or, or you know, be able to move on. And the Lord picks us up and he carries us through. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you know, we are weak, but yet he is just so strong in those times. And, and we don't face anything alone as, as Christians because we have this awesome support system known as our church family that we can lean on through these seasons. And you know, I, I know in losing my, my father and my mother just few years ago, a few years in between. You know, I leaned on my brothers and sisters, my siblings, but my church family was just such a blessing in that time. 
And Hilda, please know that in the, in the days and months ahead that we are all here with you. And yeah, I have two shoulders you can lean on, either one of them, at any time. Do we have any other, anything else we'd like to share? Any unspoken we'd like to signify with the upraised hand? The Lord knows our hearts and He knows our needs and knows exactly what is needed to get us through. So if you would join with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for how you continue to work in our lives. And, and Lord, we, we just marvel at how you, how you do things and, and how, you, how you make all of this happen around us. When, when the situations seem impossible, when, when the world around us just closes in and tries to suffocate us, Lord, we, we get a fresh breath from you, Lord. Lord, I'm so thankful for Sister Michelle joining us this morning. And you know, I've seen her from time to time when she comes by the church through the week. And we meet at the door and we'll talk for a little bit. But she has been through, through so much, Lord. And we, we thank you how you have held her by the hand and have taken her through this unexpected season in her life, Lord. And we, we just thank you for, for giving her that fresh breath and, and, and bringing healing to her life. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for uh, our sister Lisa Popa, who's at home, who has uh, had her second negative test, and, and she is on the mend, Lord. And we thank you for the healing that you have brought to her, and how you have how you have walked with her through this this time in her life as well. Lord, Lord, we thank you for the miracle that you have worked in in dear Millie's life. Lord, Millie is such a special person, and. Every time I've ever seen her, I just know that she has been in so much pain, but she never lets on, at least to me anyway. And, and Lord, I am just so, I'm just so thankful for the report that Sister Carol shared with, with how, how she has to kind of slow herself down because she feels so good now. You know, it's just the simple things of life that, that we take for granted, but to take a step without being in agony, that is, that is just a miracle from you, Lord, and we thank you for that and how you have placed the, the right doctors and medical team in charge of her care. And, you know, doctors do surgery and, you know, nurses and medical staffs, they treat, but you bring healing, Lord, and we thank you for that healing that you're bringing into Millie's life. And Lord, we, we thank you for how you've worked in Wendy and Jerry's son's life, how, how you've taken something that that just seemed like such a horrible situation. Have, having a job taken for, for essentially no real good reason, Lord, and having that taken so unexpectedly, and then you turn it around, not only you provide a job, but yet an added bonus on top of that, Lord. And Lord, we, we thank you for how you, how you just, miracle upon miracle, blessing upon blessing each and every day, Lord. We just can't thank you enough. And Lord, we have those things that, that are just weighing on our hearts, Lord, that, that sometimes seem too, too difficult or too heavy for us to carry. But we know that you are strong enough for anything. Lord, you created this universe and everything in it, so you know what is needed to sustain things as we move forward, Lord, and you know what we need. And Lord, I thank you for, for working in Hilda's life and in, her, in the life of her children, Lord, in, the, in this season of loss, Lord. Lord, we're going to miss Paul. It, it was such a blessing to get, him, get to know him over the short time that I got to know him, Lord. But we also understand where he is now, Lord. And Lord, we, we rejoice in knowing that Paul is with you and how you have used the people in this church and, and others to make a difference in his life. As somebody mentioned that at, at his service the other day, that there was a softness in Paul's heart that wasn't there before. And that can only come from you, Lord. So Lord, we, we thank you 
for the life and the 23 years of marriage that, that he and Hilda shared. And Lord, even though we're, we're still you know, weeping in, in this time of loss, Lord, we, we thank you for how you, how you bring us through these seasons. And also uh, the Howard family and, and their unexpected loss of uh, Tim. And, and we pray for, for your compassionate touch upon their family as well as they go through this season, along with the Dillon family, uh, whose service will be coming up later this week, Lord. And uh, also, Lord, we pray, we continue to pray for the Alston family and the passing of uh, Willie Alston. And just, we ask for a continued touch there as, as that family goes through this season as well. And uh, we continue to pray for Pat Leonelli, who has a surgery coming up here at the end of the month, Lord. Lord, I'm not sure exactly what the situation is there, but, but the good thing is, you know exactly what is going on there, what is needed. And Lord, we know that you can touch Pat and bring, and bring complete healing to her. Lord, we, we continue to lift up Lisa's aunt Joanne and her cousin uh, Diana and their back pain and their apnea issues, Lord. We ask for a healing touch upon them, Lord. And for a gentleman named Sam, Sammy who has cancer, Lord. We ask for a touch upon his body right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We pray for Gary Lee, Ellen Barker's son, who is hospitalized with COVID-19 and the family is self-quarantined at home, Lord. Lord, this, this virus has touched so many people. It, it has no bounds. And Lord, just when we think we know what we're dealing with, you know, there's another curveball or Lord, there's just so much confusion surrounding this. And Lord, we just, we just pray for a special touch on Gary this morning as, he, as he's going through this and also for his family. And also we pray, Lord, for uh, Beth Pike as she is recovering from, from a 13-hour surgical procedure, Lord. Lord, that is quite taxing on the body, but, but we know that, that you were with her through that surgery. And Lord, we, we, are, we pray for Beth and we pray for healing upon her and comfort in this time. And we pray for Dwight Cook as, as he has his health issues and doctor's appointment coming up. Lord, we pray for a touch upon Dwight and for all those unspoken requests signified by, by each and every hand that went up, Lord. Lord, you know the groanings of our heart. You know what, what is pulling at our hearts today, Lord. So Lord, I ask you to continue to work in each and every instance there, Lord. And Lord, this morning I have a special prayer for your churches and their pastors. Lord, this is quite the unusual time to say the least. Uh, to try to minister to congregations during this pandemic. And some churches are struggling mightily. And Lord, there are many pastors that are coming under fire for how they handle things, how they, it's been said that pastors are ministering in fear and making decisions haphazardly, Lord. And Lord, it is my prayer that your pastors of your churches are, are men and women guided by the Spirit and are leading as directed by the Spirit. No matter what people may say, what people may think, Lord, you are directing your under-shepherds on how to minister to their flocks, Lord. And Lord, I pray for strength in our pastors and in our congregations and in the days and weeks and months ahead, Lord. Lord, I am just so blessed to be able to call you my Savior, Lord. And Lord, in the example that, that we set before others and having the opportunity, even if it's just a, a car ride from the mall to the house, even in those short times to where we can share the good news of Jesus with people. Lord, we... 
we may only have a moment to plant a seed, but it's in those moments is when we need to be ready and willing to place our hands into that dirt and plant that seed. And then you will place the next person in line to add some water and add the things needed to, to mature that seed and bring growth for it. And I thank you for, for, for Jade and Rich and Richard and how they, how they not only call themselves Christian by name, but they live it, Lord, and they live it in a way that is, that is inviting, that, that brings curiosity. It's like there's something different. I want to know a little more. So, Lord, we thank you for, for just being you, for having you to lean on through the storms of life and the times of loss, through, through sickness and illness and, and surgeries and everything else, Lord. We, we just thank you this morning. And, Lord, please know that nothing else, that we love you with all of our hearts. For it is in the name of of Jesus that we pray this morning. And all of God's people said, Amen. I also have one one light one that came in. We will add that as well. Um, a Mr. Bloomberg and his family, they have a um, serious decision up, upcoming uh, due to a poor health. And they are uh, friends of uh, Phyllis Murphy in Florida. So if we could lift up the uh, Bloomberg family in prayer as well. Um, is it me or do we have special music right now? <laughs> Would you like to go next, Kristen? Good morning. Good morning. It's a blessing to be here. It's a blessing to see you. It's an extra, extra blessing to see you, actually. There's something about quarantine that makes you really value <laughs> just other friendly faces, even if they're six feet apart. Praise the Lord for, for your wonderful faith and for those of you who are here and those of you who are there. I've never live streamed in my life before, so... <laughs> This is new for me. I want to share with you very quickly before I sing that uh, before I came up to, to here and I'm going on up to Brooklyn to, to sort of check the apartment and clean it before we return for George to start school again. My son George goes to school uh, in Brooklyn. And um, I was praying a great deal about it and read Psalm 121, which I won't read now because it's, it's long. And uh, But I want to say that I realized somewhere along the line of trusting in the Lord and praying for help, for safety, for our needs, that if you truly trust the Lord to guide your steps and to take care of you, your circumstances do not change when there is challenge or danger. What I mean is, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get broke or get hurt or get sick or anything like that, but the Lord stays the same throughout the course of whatever it is. He does not change. That is so hopeful and helpful and vital to my sanity and to yours. Um, and I want to read from Romans. Uh, the Apostle Paul brought up Abraham in telling the Roman church to, to hold on and to have faith. And it says, against all hope, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and that it said yes he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God being fully persuaded that what God, that God had power to do what he had promised now the promises of God are true and he has the power to bring them about and as i said you know Jesus came and he died. The Apostle Paul died hard. So it doesn't mean there won't be trouble, but it does mean that the Lord's promises are true and he will be there if we rest on him and lean on him. 
So I'm going to sing It Is Well With My Soul. <clears throat> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea that to the band that had to come on after Elvis. You know, it's like, it's like you can't, you can't even come close to that. Thank you so much, sister. That was such a blessing. Well, once again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Simon Road Church of God, and welcome to everyone joining us on our Facebook live stream. Uh, I pray that you all are enjoying this beautiful Sunday morning. As I said earlier, it's uh, quite cooler than what it was last week. So that's, that's a blessing in and of itself. Uh, I'd like to take just a few moments here to go over some real quick announcements, bring you up to speed on a few things. Um, the summer revival services that will be starting next Sunday at the NEO Retreat Center. Um, this here, the, the uh, Revival services, these have kind of been uh, an ever-changing thing. Uh, it went from regular camp meeting, then they nixed that, then they come out with uh, these revival services. 
that were going to run for a full week. Now it is only going, I believe it is uh, Sunday through Wednesday of next week. And uh, you can see a little bit of the schedule there and we have some printed out at our Welcome Center as well. Uh, so as of this morning, that is the schedule for the revival services. I know that they are working, doing their best to build in some social distancing and they'll be doing the, uh, the typical uh, sanitizing measures that everyone's been trying to do uh, as we do our part through this pandemic. Uh, but uh, the camp meeting team, they've faced quite a challenge this year as we all have. So um, if you are able and, you're, and you feel comfortable in attending out there, uh, I encourage you uh, to participate in that. Uh, there will be a different pastor speaking each, each evening, and each of those pastors is from our Northeast Ohio Church of God district. Uh, and one final, final announcement that I'd like to mention, um, as we've made adjustments in how we do things here at the church due to this pandemic, um, at the conclusion of service, um, I ask that we as we make our exit, if we start at the beginning, at the back of the sanctuary rather, and dismiss that way from back to front. And uh, also ask, uh, this is one of the toughest things to ask a church family to do, because it goes against everything that we are. <laughs> but if, if you could please kind of hold off on gathering together or congregating in the hallways or at the back of the sanctuary to get outside a little more of a breeze, a little more open air, a little more room for people to do that outside. I'd, we would appreciate that. Uh, I hate asking that because, as I said, that, that really goes against everything we are as a church family. We, we love to greet everyone with handshakes and hugs, and that's been really difficult. And it's like every now and then, it's like see a brother or sister and you sneak in a a fist bump or something here or there, but it's, it's been really difficult and as we navigate through these times. Unfortunately, these are just some of the adjustments that we've had to make and, and everyone's been doing a, a tremendous job with that and respecting what we do have in place. I just, just ask as a reminder that, you know, we don't congregate together inside the building. If we could do that outside, I'd greatly appreciate that. And I thank you for your understanding. Well, how many people thought that last, last week's message was a little different? Uh, not too often you go to church and you know, you're greeted by the Brady Bunch, right? Well, allow me to begin today's message by directing your attention to our video screen. That's right, that's the A-Team. Howling Mad Murdoch, Face, B.A. Baracus, and John Hannibal Smith 
all the way from 1980s television to 2020 here at Simon Road Church of God. Perhaps some of you remember this classic TV series. Well, this group of four men, while on the run from the United States government and trying to prove their innocence in a crime that they didn't commit, took time to answer the calls of help from people in need. However cheesy the plot of the show may have been, these men, they saw a need, devised a plan, and in the end, they saved the day. Pretty simple, huh? Okay, now a little unexpected, not part of my notes, little pop quiz. For a thousand bonus points, redeemable at our Welcome Center, 1,000 points. The character played by Mr. T, his name in the show was B.A. Baracus. How many of you remember what the B.A. stands for? Anyone? It's 1,000 points, people. <laughs> Give up? Bad attitude. <laughs> hey, I, I don't like the show. He did. All right. So, but... And how many of you can remember Hannibal's famous line at the end of just about every episode? Anyone? He'd always light up a cigar, look at the camera and say, I love it when a plan comes together. Yep, yep. No matter how complicated things got, no matter how outlandish the circumstances, no matter how much the odds were stacked against them, in the end, the plan would come together and produce a victory. Friends, this morning, I'm here to share with you about God's plan for mankind, but more importantly, what our role is in his plan. This morning, I'd like for us to See how the words of Scripture reveal the very heart of God. Our text this morning can be found in Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 11 through 14. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And I apologize, I will be reading from my tablet this morning. I'm in a little trouble with my eyes. So my print in my Bible is still a tiny bit small for me to focus on. But it is Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14. The words of Jeremiah say this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. Last week, we discussed how the, we discussed how the world just has a way of trying to strip us of our own identity in Christ if we're not careful. The world offers us the glitz and glamour of the Johnny Bravo suit in exchange for who we are in the eyes of Jesus. As we continue on in the series of messages, today's title of this message comes from those famous words of Hannibal Smith. I think I have a slide for this. I love it when a plan comes together. This morning, as we dig deeper into, God, into what God's Word's trying to tell us, we're going to look at the threefold plan God has for His greatest creation, mankind. So, let's join together and begin by examining this very first point for today. Our first point, God's plan for mankind is for us to claim the gift of salvation that can only be found through accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Friends, you, you'll probably find that success or failure of any plan can be traced to its foundation. 
If your plan doesn't have a strong, solid foundation to start from, it's destined to fail. God is no fool. He has a plan for creating the heavens, the earth, and everything in it. Everything was done in a precise order and for a particular purpose. One of the greatest examples that I can think of of the precision of God's plan can be found in the positioning of the earth and our very own solar system. Friends, the earth needs to be just far enough away from the sun not to be burnt to a crisp like Mercury or Venus, but yet close enough not to be freezing cold like Mars. The Earth's position in our solar system is just right. And God used that foundation as the environment for his most prized creation, man. Then something happened that changed everything. Man fell prey to the temptation of sin. Satan tried to throw a monkey wrench into God's plan by changing the direction of man's heart. But here's the good news. God is the ultimate master planner. Nothing takes him by surprise. He is ready for every curveball that Satan can throw. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 10 reveals his necessary part of God's plan for mankind. And it reads as this. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Just as earth is placed in the perfect position in the universe to thrive, God has placed his son in the perfect position to reconnect the creation with the creator. And he does that so that we too may thrive. Sin separates us from God. But it is through Christ Jesus that we're made right with our Heavenly Father. It is through the price paid on that old rugged cross that we might have the opportunity to have the slate wiped clean, to start anew, to walk right into the light and love of our Creator. The cross, my friends, is not a tragedy. The cross is actually part of God's strategy. The price has been paid once and for all. All that it takes is to accept his gift of salvation. It just comes down to us and our choice. God's desire to have an eternal relationship with his greatest creation is the first part of God's great plan for us. And that brings us to the second point for today. God's plan for mankind is for us to live a life that brings glory to his name. Whether it was that as a young child kneeling at an altar on decision night at a vacation Bible school, or as a teenager standing amongst 6,000 other teens at an international youth convention, or whether it was later on in life's journey after hearing the gospel message on a Sunday morning or at a camp meeting from an evangelist, you chose to accept that gift of salvation and begin your relationship with Jesus. Whenever that day was for you, the abundance of life, and more important, the abundance of God's love was poured out onto you. Friends, if you haven't made that choice yet, I'm just letting you know what awaits you whenever you do make that choice in your life. And by the way, today would be a great day to make that decision. But whenever you came to Christ, 
The next part of the journey is to live a life that brings glory to God. I believe the Apostle Paul's words in Colossians 3.17 say it best. They read, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. No matter if it's flipping burgers at a fast food restaurant, driving a friend to a doctor's appointment, cutting someone's lawn, crunching numbers in an office, running Cat 5 line in a church, <laughs> volunteering at a senior center, or working hard on a farm. Whatever you do, give it your best. As followers, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are walking, talking, living, breathing proof of love, mercy, and grace of God. And with that comes great responsibility. We are responsible to reflect that same love, mercy, and grace to those around us. An old friend way back once gave me this advice when I got saved. You may be the only Jesus that people may see, so do your best because you represent Christ. Are we still going to have our bad days? Yes. Are we still going to get frustrated and upset? You bet. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. But see, it's, it's within those times of challenge, hurt, pain, and those times of stress is when those around us notice how we react and how we respond. For every bad day, there's a good day awaiting you when those storm clouds clear up. Remember, you only get to see the beauty of the rainbow after the rain passes. If you can weather the storm, there's a beautiful blessing awaiting. For every time that we get hurt by someone or someone causes us pain, there is someone in your life that's there to give you that big hug or even wipe away those tears. God's plan includes placing people in our past to help us through the storms of life. We might have to look hard to see them sometimes, but Yes, they are there. And the best part is that God has given us his Holy Spirit to dwell within us. We never truly go through anything in this world alone. It takes some work, some discipline, and some trust in God's plan. But we can live a life that brings glory to his mighty name, amen. And now we arrive at our final point for today. God's plan for mankind is for us to bring others into a relationship with him. The good news of Christ is not this secret that we're supposed to keep to ourselves. It's supposed to be this news that is so awesome and so great that we're just bursting at the seams and want to share that with people. One of the greatest examples of this part of God's plan proclaimed in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
Friends, I hope that sounds familiar to you. These are marching orders from Jesus himself, known as the Great Commission. It is our responsibility to share the good news of Jesus with those who we encounter in our daily lives. The gift of salvation isn't just for you, or just for me, or just for a select group. The gift of salvation is available for all. I believe in God's word, and I believe what it says in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God desires that not one of his children be left behind. It is the greatest desire of his heart. The mission is to reach every corner of the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Whatever language it needs to be translated into, however it needs to be spoken, God's word is meant for all. God has a plan to accomplish his mission and it involves, you guessed it, us. Now, could God just reach down from his throne and make mankind follow him? Well, he is God, so he could do that if he really wanted to go that route. But please remember that God created mankind out of love and out of desire to have a personal, vibrant relationship with us. He wants us to choose to love him. He wants us to choose to love him enough to give up our temporal human desires for a personal, intimate, eternal relationship with him. Any relationship based on anything other than that would be doomed to fail. Friends, we began this message with the introduction to the old 18 television show. Now, some of you may think that it was a little strange that I began with that. That's okay. I'm a little strange myself. But that TV show and the words of the prophet Jeremiah have a common thread. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and bring you back from captivity. The A-team never took on a challenge without formulating a plan and acquiring all the necessary resources to carry out that plan to victory. God does have a plan for this world. And it involves every single one of us. While we all have gifts unique to our own course of life, we all have been chosen to fulfill a vital role in God's plan to reach those who are lost, those who are hurting, those who are desperate for a new course, those who are sinking in the quicksand of addiction, the whosoevers of this world who need that amazing grace that only comes from the one who possesses the name above all names, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the living Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. Friends, we all have a part in this. We are all part of God's amazing plan. We just have to answer the call and be willing to do our part. So as our praise team comes to lead us in a closing song, please know that our role in God's plan is clear. God's plan for mankind is for us to claim the gift of salvation that can only, come, that can only be found through accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. 
Secondly, God's plan for mankind is for us to live a life that brings glory to his name. And lastly, God's plan for mankind is for us to bring others into a relationship with him. The plan has been made. All the resources are in place. He has equipped each of us to do our part. He has intentionally placed people in our paths along the way of life. And now it falls to each one of us to fulfill our role in God's plan for mankind. When we put forward our best effort, when we reach beyond ourselves, get involved and reach out to those around us who are in need, God's plan begins to unfold. And it's within that moment when we do our part and God speaks to the hearts of the lost, that's when the beauty of his plan is truly revealed. And as Hannibal Smith would say at the end of those episodes, I do love it when a plan comes together. Amen? Amen.
Father God, it is good to be in your house today. It was, it was just such a blessing to, to come and, and be able to lift our voices to you and to worship you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that, that all that we have done today and everything that, that has been said has been pleasing to your ear. And Lord, I pray that the message that was given today has touched hearts and has begun that little bit of that transformation that we all need in our lives, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, we, we know that when we follow your plan, that your plan leads to just a sweet, sweet victory, Lord. A victory where heaven rejoices. A victory that puts a smile on your face. A victory that grows the kingdom. So, Lord, as we leave, leave this place and we go our separate ways, Lord, may we always stay close to you and may your spirit continue to walk alongside us through this crazy thing we call life, Lord. Lord, we thank you for how you continue to bless us. And, Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray today. Our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. All God's people said. Amen. 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 God bless you.